Today we're talking about a Yashica J5. Uh, this one cost me about $50. It's in excellent condition. On eBay, uh, they're going for about $90. Originally in 1964, when these were new, they cost $175 with the 1.8 lens, which this one has. Um, and if you wanted the F1.4 lens, it was $225. That's U.S. dollars. I bought mine in Japan. Uh, with an excellent exchange rate. At the time, the exchange rate was 0 0.002778 yen per dollar. So these were, um, on the open market, they were priced at 39,000 yen. I probably paid less than 39,000 yen, but that was $108. So I probably paid around $100 for, for my copy, um, which is long gone. I wish I had it, but this is one I bought on eBay. Um, I couldn't afford the extra $30 for the 1.4 lens. Um, at the time, cameras and stereos in Japan cost about one-third to one-half of what the price is in the United States. Um, the J5 was my first single lens reflex. Uh, I bought it new in Japan during my first cruise aboard the USS Oriskany in 1966. I love this camera. Uh, I couldn't afford a Nichromat at the time. I kept it for a year or so and uh, I somehow traded it to my friend or with my friend Joseph Zito for his Nikkor mat. I guess I thought at the time that anything Nikon was better. No complaints against the Nikkor mat, but the old J5 was a wonderful camera. The Nikkor mat never felt as good in my hands as the old Yashica J5. The predecessor to this was the J3. Um, that was produced in 1962. The J5 came out in 1964. The difference was primarily that it had uh, the shutter speed went up from a five hundredth of a second to a thousandth of a second. Um, after the J5, the J4 was introduced. I know they're out of order. It went J3, J5, J4, J7 in that order. The J4 came out one year later in 1965. Um, the primary difference was the way the um, battery was turned. Uh, it, it didn't have a high and low setting. For the battery and and it had a button on the back for a press to test for the battery. Um, then in 1968 they introduced the J7 finally that's the last in the series um, and it was the same as the J4 uh, except the slow shutter speed was one second instead of two seconds the rest was pretty much the same. At any rate this is my trusty old J5. Now, if you watched my last video, you remember I told you the one thing you don't want to do to an old used camera is play with the self-timer. Um, I would have reviewed this a long time ago, but it was hopelessly jammed and I couldn't figure out how to unjam it. I was about to take it apart when I fiddled and fiddled with it. Um, I had the lens off and there's a couple little mechanisms inside I was playing with and miraculously it started working again after I cycled the self-timer down. I never intend to touch that self-timer again on this camera. So these came out in 64. Um, the historical significance is in Yashica, the uh, 35mm single lens reflex with the CDS cell um, was introduced. It, it has an M42 screw mount lens, uh, which was actually common with a lot of the high precision cameras. Some like us had an M42 screw mount, I believe. Um, it has a battery-powered meter coupled to the shutter speed setting uh, and a focal plane shutter which speeds up to one thousandth of a second. The M42 screw mount lens is kind of nice. Uh, people don't like it, but you just turn it off. There's no lock mechanism. You just spin it till it comes off. It's easy to get off. It's easy to get on. I think it's easier to get on than a lot of the bayonet mount lenses. You see there's, um, there is a prong here for the uh, f-stop. If I set it at f, um, f16 and press this prong, you can see the f-stop closing down. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. I'll try it both right side up and upside down here. So there is automatic um, f-stop closing when you take a, a picture. It's easy to thread. It never cross threads. They go on wicked easy. Here's the focus. It goes down to about a foot and a half. 
or just less than 0.05 meters. Here's where you change the aperture. And this little plastic thing here is where you switch from open aperture to stop down in case you want to do a depth of field preview that will bring that down. Um, okay, that's the shutter going off. Here's where you set the shutter speeds, pretty obvious. There's the film counter window right there. On the bottom, this is the lock for opening the door. This is the battery compartment. This is the rewind button. Pretty simple camera. This is the needle system for setting the uh, exposure meter. I'll have to put a new battery in this to check it. This little um, lever here, which you can turn with either the top knob or the bottom, in the center position, the battery is turned off. This is the highlight setting. This is the low light setting. There were two ranges here. And again, you watch the needle in the window to see it display. There is no press to test on this one. So if you don't turn it off, you'll probably drain the battery down. So to open the back, or to you, you unlock it here, and then you have to pull up on this a little bit, I think. Maybe not, and it opens up, and you simply install the film, and away it goes. Um, you can see the you can see the film plane move sideways here. If I set it to bulb, you can actually see it open. There's the bulb setting open and closed. Goes from left to right. So when you wind it, you can see the seam going by on the cloth shutter plane, focal plane shutter. That's the cocked position. Here's the little lock. And we're all set. And I'll try and change the battery. Like uh, most of these cameras, it takes uh, a, a mercury battery, which aren't available anymore. The plus side goes up. It easily started the thread without giving me any grief. I use a quarter to tighten it up. And that should give me meter readings. If you can see that, but um, as I put my finger over the meter, it deflects to the right, and now it's going to the left. That's the low setting, that's the high setting, and this is off. I got it set at f1.8 now. If I point it towards the window, and set the shutter speed down to a fourth of a second or so. You can see it, it right about there. That's telling me um, I don't know what it's telling me. Well, you, you have to set you have to set the ASA in this ring here, 
which is not easy. Uh, they actually tell you to pull up the rewind knob so that you can get at these little pins, but you turn the little pins until it's set for the, for the film speed. Right now this one's set at ASA 400. And I'll take a closer picture of that. So I sat the camera on my printer with this all white surface pointed at the window. Uh, right now we're set at 125th of a second. Uh, the aperture is set at 5.6. Only the shutter speed is coupled to the meter reading. But down on the meter, you can see I'm set in the low um, position, which has the highest sensitivity. And it says that at the particular shutter speed I'm at, which happens to be 125th, um, that I should be shooting at around f8. Um, here you'll notice the ASA on the left hand side by the low setting is set at around ASA 400. Here I moved the uh, light meter reading to the high position which shifted the scale and I'm at a 60th of a second and if you look at the indicator dial here it says I should be set at f11 which I did. Okay guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.